Um, can you hear me? Great. So I'm Nikki from Mapbox, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about designing OpenStreetMap, um, or more specifically, designing maps based on OpenStreetMap data. So recently, the team at Mapbox has been designing a lot of scalable global base maps, um, all based on OSM data. And I'm going to share a few, a couple of them today, and also share a few, um, a few of the insights we had from designing them. So um, all the maps that I'm going to show today are um, powered by vector tiles, and so I'm not going to talk too much about the technology of vector tiles, but this. Um, allows you to really design a lot of maps um, without having a huge database because um, you don't actually need your own vector tile data set. You can, use, you can use an existing one. And so this really makes it a, easier for a lot of people to design their own maps. Um, and that's kind of one of the big takeaways I want to talk about today. It's really this is something that everybody can do right now. And so I'm just going to quickly show a couple of um, the maps, and I'll probably go back to a bunch of them later. And so this map over here, if you are familiar with Mapbox products, you might recognize it. It's our um, sort of default street view map. And it has a lot of OSM features in it, so it's a great map for a lot of different functions. Um, and the vector tile source um, that's powering this map is our Mapbox Streets vector tile source. It's, um, it's basically we've imported a bunch of OSM data and processed it into vector tiles. And um, the queries have been optimized, and it's a really curated set of OSM features. So it's a really great data source for styling maps. And so, um, again, so this is powered by the Mapbox Streets data vector tile source, but so is all of these maps. So we've designed a whole bunch of custom maps, and they're all using the same data source. Um, and I just want to quickly mention, we have designed all of these in TileMill 2. It's our um, open source tool for styling vector tiles. It's currently in development, but um, if you go to the GitHub repo, you can download it. Um, we do have, we have a little bit of documentation on it. Um, and this is what the UI looks like. And so you can see there's a, um, a live preview of your map on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, there's a code editor for Cardo CSS. And so this is how we designed all of the maps that I'm going to show today. But um, I'm just going to talk about some like pretty general design decisions, I think. So they're not specific to any tools or technologies. So I think a lot of times when people talk about designing maps, we're talking about styling features. But I kind of want to take a little bit of a step back um, and really talk about function and context. And um, these are really the two key things in sort of like all the design decisions that come into making a map. You know, so what is the purpose of the map? And who is the user? Who's going to be using this map? Um, how are they interacting with it? You know, and where are they interacting with it? Um, as an example, this is um, a map that we designed for the Financial Times. Um, and so this map was really designed um, for them to overlay a lot of different types of complex data visualizations on top of. And so this is the map we designed, but um, nobody ever really sees it like this. You know, usually it's seen more like this. So that's a really important consideration when you're designing a map. Like, what is it actually going to look like to somebody? Um, and you know, so this is a news website. So. Also, no one's really going to see the map on its own. It's always going to be embedded in an article. So there's kind of other content to consider when you're designing the map. And then, you know, if it's in a website, there's, a, you know, there's website navigation, there's other UI, there's always other components. So it's not ever just a map you're designing. There's a whole context around it. 
Um, and so I think um, for me, a really important part of the design process is actually curating the information. I think, um, and I think this is a specifically relevant here where OSM is a huge database, like there's so many features and it's really tempting to just kind of use a lot of them because you have access to them, but you know, this is, um, this is a really great base map for um, editing OSM. It's a little bit overwhelming, it's a little bit much for most other purposes, so you know, we're trying not to constantly design this. We're trying to be a little bit more curated. Um, so another consideration um, when thinking about which data you want to include in your map is you might have some custom data that you know you want to incorporate into your map. And I'm going to talk about this a little bit in terms of vector tile compositing because there's some cool things you can do with uh, vector tiles. And um, this is, so this is Mapbox Outdoors that we, Mapbox just launched this week and um, I'm really excited to show it to you guys because this is OSM data. It's basically pulling from our Mapbox Street vector tile data but also a vector data source for terrain. So there's hill shades, there's um, land covers and there's contour data in here. So here is a really great shot for seeing the, um, the land cover. And so this map we've designed um, to really be good for outdoor activities like biking and hiking, skiing, running. So um, you can really see how much extra context the terrain adds to this. And actually there's, very, there's a lot fewer OSM features in here too compared to say our default street view. So it's definitely a very curated um, composite of features. I'm just gonna show you a few more slides because they're really, it's nice to see the different details. And I also just want to point out one other thing about vector tile compositing. It's a little bit hard to see on this map, but um, in like hilly um, cities like San Francisco, um, you can see that there's contour lines in here and they actually, um, I've exaggerated the style just so you can see. You can actually see that the contour lines are under a bunch of OSM features like buildings and roads, but the labels themselves are on top of all of these features. So even though they come from two different data sources, there's an OSM data and a custom data source, we can still reorder the different f features, which I think is really interesting. And it really gives you a lot of control over how composited um, data sources can be styled. Another example of this, um, this is, so this is a work in progress, it's not finished, but um, I just wanna show you this because it's Foursquare POI data actually overlaid on top of OSM data. And so the thing I really wanna show you about this is that um, there's no label collisions, so the data sources are actually aware of each other and so they react in the same way that data would be from the same source, but this is coming from two different sources. So I think that is, um, from a design perspective, it's really amazing to be able to just style two different data sources as one. Um, oh, also, um, the National Park Service has a really great example of compositing a lot of um, custom data with um, OSM, um, OSM data source, so definitely check out their talk later in the afternoon. Um, it's a lot more involved than these examples that I'm showing. So again, um, going back to the idea of function and context, I think those are really the key things that really decide the overall design direction. So everything about the design of a map really comes down to those things. And as an example, I want to show you this. Um, so Visco is a uh, website for um, like curating f online photography. And so uh, one of my uh, teammates recently uh, designed a map for them. And um, you can see, so their website's already fully functional and you can pull a lot of design decisions from this context itself. It's a very minimal aesthetic. Um, it's really like highlighting the photography. That's the point of the website. And I'm, here I'm kind of just abstracting out some of the design decisions that were made for that map. And you can see how closely the color palette and the typography relate to the context itself. And this is what the map looks like in the context. 
and you can really see not just the connection between the map and its context and how much of a seamless you know, experience it is, but also how well it works to, uh, for its purpose, which is to highlight where um, these pretty intricate um, photo markers are in the world. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, um, so it works very well both for the function and the context. So that's kind of like, I always like to sort of take a step back and think about those things before I really get into styling, especially if you're using a tool like Tomil 2, it's really, it's really easy to start styling, and so it's really tempting to just jump in and start styling a bunch of features. But so I like to take that little step back first, and then think about how to style each of my individual um, pieces of data. And I think um, the really important thing is creating a sense of visual harmony and hierarchy in a map. Um, and Stamen um, talked about this briefly too, but I think it's sort of bears repeating, but hierarchy is one of the most important things, I think, in making a map really legible and really useful. And, um, and so this is life for me, at least personally. I always design an uh, interactive map sort of holistically, like all the features together. I style the zoom levels together. I never work on one zoom level first and then, you know, go up or down. I just, I style everything together. And um, so there's kind of too much to talk about in styling, so I'm just going to concentrate on talking about um, two types of features as an example. Um, I think loads are one of the most prominent features in a lot of maps, no matter what the function is. So I'm going to um, show a couple examples of load styling. And um, I'm talking about both the geometry of the roads and the labels as well. So here I'm going to show, this is a side-by-side -side comparison of two maps that we designed that are really for routing purposes. Um, but the one on the left is uh, more for auto and, uh, and also for the nighttime. And the one on the right is uh, mainly designed for running or biking or some kind of outdoor activity. And so right away you can see um, that the map on the left, just based on the color choices, is really highlighting the roads. So that's one of the key features in the hierarchy, um, the roads and especially the highways. For the running map, it's, um, the focus is much more on terrain and sort of land use instead of the roads. Um, it's really giving you a more like outdoorsy feel. And I'm just zooming in a little bit closer so you can see that um, you know, we're not just creating a hierarchy between roads and other features, but also different classes of roads. So on the left, the highways are very highlighted, you know, both because of their color, but also the widths of the roads. So the highways are more important, the main roads are less important, and then the smaller streets are, you know, even less prominent. Um, on the right, for the running map, that's actually not the case because you can't run a highway, so that information is not as valuable to the user. So we've actually styled them in a way to de-emphasize them and to really give more prominence to the roads that are actually runnable. And here, it's a little bit difficult to see. They're a bit small, but I just want to highlight um, on the left, you can see some, um, they're actually customized U.S. highway shields for the different type of U.S. highways. So I thought that was kind of, a nice touch to really give you more information about the prominent roads. And here you can see too, the running, road, the running map on the right has pedestrian paths, and that's just kind of extraneous information for the auto map, so we just didn't include them at all. Um, and then I just want to give you a couple other examples. I'm not going to get into the technical details, but just a really quick sort of visual things that you can do with roads to either make them more prominent or less prominent or, you know, sort of make them more cohesive with the rest of the features. So the, so using, um, using um, multiple instances of drawing a road, this creates a sort of three-dimensional effect, which we've also applied onto the buildings, so it kind of makes the whole map cohesive. And then, this is also a little hard to see, I apologize, but um, using the same, pretty much the same technique, but in the opposite direction, you can kind of make the roads look like they're etched in, and that de-emphasizes them a little bit, and also gives it a different kind of feel. So I'm not gonna talk too much about different like techniques for styling the roads, but 
um, there's a lot of things you could do uh, with the way you draw them to really either um, make the hierarchy between the roads very different and make the hierarchy between the roads and other features very different. And then I, the other thing I want to just quickly use as an example, because I also think it's a really um, it's a really prominent feature in a lot of maps is place labels. So like country names, um, cities, towns, villages, um, neighborhoods, etc. Um, these are pretty prominent in most maps. So I think it's worth talking a little bit about the place label hierarchy. And this is an example that I love. It's um, a map that we designed for GitHub. And so it's really just there to show, to be a context for um, your GeoJSON data. And so it's a really minimal base map. Um, you know, you're not like, you're not really moving around the map, you're not panning around, you're not looking for places, you're just getting just enough context to understand what your data is. You know, and that data could be, you know, different types of geometries. And so here I've kind of um, abstracted out the place label hierarchy and the styling. So you can really see that basically all the place labels, which are the ones on the top, are styled exactly the same. They're just using size to denote the different types of places. Um, and then just as a um, point of reference, I've also shown the point of interest and road labels, which are also very similar to the place labels actually, but just a little bit more subtle. And so, I mean, I think if you only need a very minimal base map, I definitely think as few styling differences um, is good. It's always better to be more min minimal, I think. So basically, there's just two um, styles of labels in this whole base map. Can you go back one so we can get that URL again? I'm sorry? That's it. I just wanted to see where that was. Thank you. Oh, OK. Great. Um, and then I just want to contrast that map with um, a map that we recently designed for Foursquare. So this is a very different type of map, because even though it's not a routing map like the ones I uh, showed just previously, you know, it is still marking physical places that people might want to go to. So you actually need a lot more context about the physical location, you know, where the POI is, how you might get there, transportation. Um, so this map, um, the labels need to be legible like the previous map, but they also need to be very scannable. You need to be able to look at a large section of it very quickly and sort of get a sort of higher level information from it without reading every single label. <coughs> oh, and I just wanted to show you here too. Um, the other th interesting thing about this map is that it's really about, it's not just about a location, it's about relational information, markers related to each other. And so for a map like this, for example, neighborhoods are pretty important because they kind of help to make sense of the clustering of markers. And here you can see sort of abstracted out the place label styling for this map. And you can see it's a lot more complex than the GitHub map. Um, those two typefaces used and you know three weights of Gotham, one weight of Helvetica, and those different colors and those uppercase styling. Um, and you can really see that the labels are sort of grouped into different classes. So the towns, villages, and the hamlets are kind of the same style, but they're very different from cities and they're very different from suburbs and neighborhoods. And just to compare them side to side, you can see um, how much more complex the styles on the right are because they have a much more complex function. And if you, it's a little hard to see on the screen. If you look at the maps together, you can, you can really see how much flatter the map on the left is. So there's a, really, there's a really flat hierarchy on that map, whereas the map on the right, um, there's more visual layers. Like you really can see the hierarchy between the cities and the neighborhoods and the roads and the POIs. And so that's one of the things that makes the map easy to scan. And then the one last thing I wanted to talk about with um, place labels is, um, so the examples I gave, I kind of didn't really talk about different zoom levels. Um, I kind of just left that part of it out. Um, but that's a really important part of styling. It's thinking about 
the map um, as an experience of zooming in and out and how those different zoom levels um, should be styled. So for example, this map, the country labels right now are pretty, um, are pretty simple, uh, pretty non-obtrusive, and then as you zoom in one level, you can see the style actually change a lot and they become a lot bolder because more city labels are coming in at the zoom level, so now you really need to differentiate between cities and countries. And just to um, abstract that out, you can see that this actually has a pretty dramatic shift for the same feature um, across one zoom level. Uh, mostly, like, this is a pretty dramatic shift. I wouldn't normally shift so much, but this is um, just an example to show that really, like, there's a lot of things to style because you're not just styling X number of features, you're styling X number of features across X number of zoom levels. So that's really a lot of, that's really a lot of information to think about. And so I just want to leave you now with a few um, good examples of pretty extreme styling, I think. I think everything I showed were pretty conservative, um, sort of in the grand scheme of what you can possibly do with styling. So I'm just going to show some cool examples. Um, and this is a really great example of just using, you know, illustrations and textures and decorative fonts, nothing technically difficult to really make a map have a very distinctive feel. Um, and here, you know, just simple c composite operations on the roads make them look like they're inked in. So, you know, there's no special um, graphics in there. It's just a very simple technique. Um, also, you can use regex on data, so that's always fun to play with. Um, and this is a cool map, um, I think, because um, there's very little labeling on this map, but there's, um, there's these um, markers that kind of look like beacons of light, and they're relative to the size of the feature, and so this really kind of gives you a sense of like a clustering of human activity, you know. So this is like really a good way of showing metadata, I think, in a really beautiful way. Um, and this is a map that um, my teammate Simon just designed, um, which is, I think, pretty cool, because basically, like everything I just talked about, like this ignores. It kind of breaks like everything. Um, but it's really interesting too, because actually there's still a lot of legibility in this map. Like you, you can still get a lot of information from it, even though it's, you know, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Okay, so I'm gonna attempt to do a little bit of a live demo. I really wanna give you guys a sneak peek of something that we've been working on with vector tiles. It's very much still in development, um, and that's in browser rendering using WebGL. Um, so, bear with me for a second. Okay. Okay. Hopefully, the WebGL will cooperate with me. Um, so, this is a map that was. Um, also powered with vector tiles, but rendered in browser. And so that really kind of gives you a lot more options with compositing with custom data. So um, one of the cool things about this is that there's very seamless transitions between zoom levels. And actually this um, really makes me think very differently about styling across zoom levels. Um, for example, using functions to style different features. And another really cool thing about this is the ability to rotate the map. And you'll notice too um, that the labels are orienting themselves automatically to be legible, which is pretty cool. And then, um, and then I was just talking about the way that um, the base layer interacts with um, other data, you'll see that there's a route drawn here, but um, I'll try to zoom in more so you can really see. But actually the road labels are still drawn on top of the route. Um, so that's um, a really, a really um, great level of customization. You'll always be able to see your road labels even if you're drawing routes on top of the base map, which is pretty cool. And then, um, just 
want to show one more example. And this is, um, I hope you can see that from here. This is actually close to live video. Um, oops, let's see. Um, I believe this one is from um, Skybox, and you can see that the OSM data is overlaid on top of the video, which is pretty amazing, I think. It's hard to see. There are cars moving over there. <laughs> Okay, so that's pretty much all I have for today. Um, if you're interested at all in creating your own vector tiles, um, my teammate, Dane Springmeyer, is actually doing a session right after this about creating um, vector tiles. I believe it's called um, Processing OpenStreetMap into Vector Tiles. So definitely check that out. Um, and yeah, thanks for letting me share with you guys some of the stuff that we've been doing at Mapbox. Um, I really just want to emphasize again that designing your own custom base map is something everyone can do. So there's really no reason why you can't have a map that's designed specifically for your purposes. Um, it, like Especially with vector tiles, it really just makes that really easy for everyone to do. Um, thanks. That's it.